Well, after a very convoluted and messy episode, we get a much more focused episode on the very complicated relationship between Travis and Chris. Hey guys, here I'm Fear the Walking Dead, Season 2, Episode 13, Day of Death, and I was looking forward to this episode. You guys know that I really was not a fan of last week's episode. I just thought that it was very messy and very convoluted, and I was hoping this episode would be a lot more focused, and that it was. It definitely was a lot more focused, and I did like the story overall. It just wasn't the most interesting episode, and I will say that there were some really great scenes in this episode, and... Probably some of the best performances we've had from most of the actors on this show, but for an episode that is before a two-hour, you know, finale, this episode was kind of lacking. I don't think that it was bad necessarily, just a little bit slower, and honestly, I really feel that this whole Travis and Chris uh, plot that we get in this episode would have made a lot more sense to get it throughout the season rather than just this episode, but let's just get in this episode because... I did enjoy it overall, I just wasn't particularly as interested as the episode wanted me to be, but we start off and there's these group of people flocked to a fence with bags in their hand, Madison's group looking on them from inside the gate, and it's just absolute chaos. I mean, Elena's apologizing for not being able to let them, and the group is ta is uh, targeting Madison for turning on the lights, Travis walks up to the gate, Madison approaches the gate to greet him, and we at this point have no idea what's going on, it just seems like it's complete chaos within the hotel. Um, one of my complaints this episode, by the way, is that there is no Nick and, uh, um, you know, Luciana. They're not in this episode. They've been the most interesting part of this entire season, and they're not in the episode. So, back at the farm, seen a few episodes ago, Chris stands above, uh, the dead farmer with his gun. Now, this is where most of the episode takes place, is in flashback. He strands over the dead farmer, um, with his gun drawn, and the American boys help their friend. Travis lets out a deep breath before tending to the boy who was shot in the leg. They're skeptical of his ability to help, and he points out that the bullet went all the way through, which is a good thing, and he's gonna try and stitch the leg. So, Travis runs outside, looks into the house to look for medical supplies. He rummages through drawers and cabinets, and... Travis then stitches the bullet wound while the other boys hold him down. They roll him over to stitch the exit wound as the boy screams in pain. He promises not to move him anymore until he's better and assures the group that that will happen. So, outside, Travis then buries the farmer next to some other previous graves and makes the headstone man's name on it because he actually doesn't know the man's name, which I thought was interesting to see. And I do like the way that Travis has inexplicably gotten himself involved in this and how he really doesn't want to have to be doing all this, but this is just kind of the way things are. But Travis did get kind of annoying, but at the same time, time i think chris was definitely the more annoying one this episode so at night the boys eat some chicken they make jokes over beers and a campfire and the injured friend lays in his place travis asks him how he's doing he lies about it trying to act like he will be able to move soon and not and is you know not in that much pain which obviously isn't true but travis tries to level with him and the boy says he'll tell the truth travis then walks over to the campfire tells chris that they need to talk and chris is not interested and this is one of the biggest parts of the episode. The fact that Travis basically has no control over Chris. I mean, Chris isn't going to do anything that Travis tells him to do, and Travis is kind of outnumbered. And it's definitely a sad story, but it's very hopeless. I mean, you very much can tell where this is going to go. And in general, I really am hoping that this is Chris's last episode on the show, because I just really haven't been a fan of this character. Travis points out that Chris killed a man today and is showing no remorse before slapping the beer from his hands, and that I understand. I mean, obviously, he doesn't seem to care especially, and he asks Chris what he's thinking. Chris insists that the man shot James, his friend, so he shot back, and... Travis wants to know where Chris's remorse went, but Chris insists that there is no more good and no more right or wrong. So Chris is clearly someone who is getting heavily involved in the apocalypse, and he very much knows how to live, which is good, but again, it's just kind of stubborn the way that they took this story. I mean, Chris starts to reflect on middle school, how he used to hide from the bullies in middle school, and at those times, Travis told him to play along and try to fit in, but Travis emphasized that he was telling him to act and not be. Chris claims that Travis is very little worse for this group, and he needs to be careful before walking off. So, back to present time, Travis then gets to the front of the gates, and Madison insists they open the gate. Alicia asks where Chris is, and Travis dodges answers. Clearly, there's a reason why Chris isn't there. They slip him through the gate, lock it before others can get in. I honestly thought that it was going to end up where uh, Travis ended up killing Chris, but we'll get to that. Travis and Alicia then stand on a balcony. 
Madison offers him food, but he rejects the offers, and he asks where Nick is. Madison tells him that he ran off like he always does, and... I did like seeing Travis and Madison reunite, but there's no real mention of their marital problems that they were having, you know, before the season. You know, as we know, uh, in the first half of the season, they were having so many, not marital problems, but uh, relationship problems. And in this episode, there is no such mention of them. And that's something that Fear the Walking Dead tends to do. They'll introduce something in an episode and then they'll completely just nix it in the next episode. And I can't stand it when the show does that. And this is a perfect example of that. So, basically, he then asks where Nick is. Madison tells him that he ran off like he always does. She has an idea of where he is in Tijuana. Travis tells her that he's sorry before she asks where Chris is, and this makes him a bit distraught before he walks back inside to sit on the bed. She follows him in. He tells her that I had no choice, and at this point, I'm like, he killed Chris. Like, I literally thought he was going to admit that he killed Chris. I, I thought that that was what was going to happen, but... Back at the farm, a pickup truck then rolls up to roll the group out. James insists he's good to go. It's been a week. They're going to ride up to San Diego, and Travis tells the group that San Diego is burnt down, but Chris won't back him up, and the group is going to San Diego whether Travis is on board or not. You know, he really doesn't have a say here. And in the house, Travis then looks at photos of a family on a wall. He digs through drawers, and he finds the farmer's name and goes outside to carve it into the cross on his grave before leaving. And the farmer's name is Elias Suarez, and... The group wants to leave, according to Chris, but Travis insists that they can wait, and back in the barn, the group then lifts James from the ground, they put him into the bed of the truck, and Chris and Travis are in the back of the truck with him. James is in a lot of pain as they pull him off, and Travis warns them to stop the truck, but James insists that they don't. He starts banging on the truck, yelling for Brandon to stop after James passes out, and finally he does. So at night, Travis then overhears the group talking about James deciding that they can't keep caring for him, and Travis walks in, questions what is wrong with them. He wants to help James fight for his life, but the boys, some for some reason, want to abandon him, and he doesn't understand it, and he grabs Chris's gun, insists that the boys care for James. He fires a shot at Brandon's foot. Chris is angry about it because Travis will do whatever he can to get them to show remorse. He doesn't understand how they have no remorse whatsoever. And the problem is that Travis is one of the only people left that does have remorse. I mean, they're really... Especially, you can tell in the show, there aren't many people left that have a lot of remorse. I mean, yes, there's obviously Madison and people like that, but people like Nick and Chris and Alicia, they're really starting to realize that some people you just have to kill to survive, and this isn't so much a saving mission, it's more of a survival mission, and I think Travis really isn't understanding that. So inside, Travis sits alongside James, and he tells him that his friends want to put him down. James says that he had a friend back at the Sea of Cortez named Troy, and Troy got sick while they were figuring everything out. They knew Troy would turn, and they wouldn't let that happen because it's what Troy wanted. However, Troy got scared and begged them not to, so James took the gun. He looked him in the eye, apologized, and he just shot him because Troy didn't do, uh, you know, that that's exactly what, you know, because Troy was scared, they couldn't let him live. So Travis insists... Now, this is different, saying James isn't sick or dying, and James argues that Brandon and the others think he's dying and is nothing but dead weight, which means that they should kill him. You know, he's no use to them anyway, so he might as well just die. And let me just say, this did make sense to me. I didn't think that this didn't make sense. I thought this totally did make sense to me, especially in this world. You have to kill certain people because in order to survive, they just can't live. And I think it's something that Travis isn't really understanding, but basically gets a rude awakening about this episode, you can definitely tell. So the next morning, Chris then brings food to the door. Travis tells him to put the food down and put his hands up, and Travis pats him down, asks where the others are before telling Chris to sit down. Chris states to tell Travis that he gets it. He respects that Travis wants to serve James because his life still matters and that doesn't make people disposable, but to the others, James doesn't matter despite knowing him for so long. And Travis promises to get them out. Hugs him, but Chris grabs him, calls for the others. They barge in, they tackle Travis so they can't, so that he can't stop them from shooting James. And it's really sad to see. James is begging for his life. Brandon shoots him in the face with a rifle anyway. Travis is finally free, but he's shocked that they actually did kill him. I mean, he is he can't believe that they actually did that because you know he tried to stop them, but they did in fact kill him. And Travis is free. But the boys unpack the truck. Travis asks for a minute to talk with Chris. Brandon says that Travis can't come with him, and Travis tells Chris about Elias and how he has the same birthday as him. He pleads with Chris not to leave on his own, and basically that he's going to die. You know, if Chris leaves them, he's probably going to die. And Chris insists that Travis' way doesn't work anymore. And honestly, Chris was just being so stubborn here. I mean, Travis knows that these people aren't good, that they're going to kill Chris, that Chris is in fact dead weight to them, and... Travis brings up his promise to Liza to take care of Chris, but Chris won't stay, which that's very rare in the show. Continuity is not something the show has a lot of, and the fact they actually brought that up, I really was impressed by. So, 
Chris says it's funny because Travis found a way to kill Liza when it needed to be done, and I'm like, are we really bringing this up now? I mean, we got through all of this bullshit in episode one. Chris was upset with Travis about it. Now, all of a sudden, he's condoning what Travis is doing. I just don't understand. It seems like they have no idea what to do with this character, and I have no idea where they're going with this, but... Anyway, he claims it's different. Brand starts the truck. She drives off. Travis watches them leave, yelling and cursing for Chris, for Chris to stay, realizing he has no control over his son. And it's a sad scene, honestly. I really did feel bad for, uh, you know, Travis in this scene because you want, you know, him to go back to Chris and you want everything to be good there. But the problem is that they just do, don't really function together anymore they're not they shouldn't be together anymore and uh they're just you know their ways of you know life their ideals are really clashing and that's really keeping them from staying together which is very sad to see so on the farm there's now a headstone for james McAllister. travis walks on the farm on his own and that's basically all of the flashbacks we get the rest of the episode is of course in present time so, back in the present, Travis and Madison talk about how slim the chances are that he would be near the hotel when the lights came on after walking for two days. He's very upset about ever having to tell anyone that he left his son because he didn't want to have to do that. I mean, he feels like he broke that promise to Liza. And remember how bad, you know, Travis felt about killing Liza. He felt like he broke that promise. And Madison kisses him, but he dodges it. He says that he failed Liza. And Madison points out that Chris didn't leave him any choice. Travis tells Madison that she was right about Chris threatening her family. And he says that their parents before anyone else and is still sad about failing Liza. He regrets not telling Liza that he loved her and remembers the last thing he said to Chris was goddamn you. He forgot to tell Chris that he loved him and that that's going to be the last thing that Chris thinks of him. And it's a very powerful scene. I have to say uh, Cliff Curtis in the scene really did a great job. I really loved um, his performance in this scene. I mean, he um, really was pretty great here. I, I really did like... Um, you know, what he did in this scene. Travis gets a bad rep on the show, but I really did like his performance in the scene. I thought overall he did a very good job because you really do feel, um, you know, the weight, the emotional weight of what he had to do. Him leaving his son is something that he feels is a sin. I mean, he prom he gave this promise to lies and he completely broke it. And he feels like, you know, he's he's just completely, you can tell, just... He's dwelling on it, and he's really upset about it. He reflects on his big heart from when he was younger, but he grew angry when his family fell apart, and he blames himself. He claims it can all end for anyone at any time. Madison takes his hand, says that she has to find Alicia before heading down the hallway, and... Madison then talks to Andres about all the people they let in all 43. They have a plan to evaluate who is a threat, and Alicia's evaluating folks and their wounds to make sure that they are infected in the bunch. She steps out to talk about Travis, and Madison asks her to take a walk to the pier. Then we get this really random scene with Madison and Alicia that was really well done. I just don't really know why the scene necessarily was here, what she was trying to t do, but... Madison tells Alicia that there's something she didn't say, something she needs her to understand. Madison tells Alicia that her father's accident wasn't an accident. She thought that she was doing the right thing by telling him then that he fell asleep at the wheel, when in reality, he actually committed suicide, we found out. And I did think that this was a good scene. Again, I just don't really know if it really needed to be here, though. And Alicia questions how she can be certain. She reveals that there was a note. Alicia asks what it said, and Madison tries to dodge telling her, but Alicia insists that she loves her all, but enough's enough. And Madison and uh, Alicia asks if Nick knows, and Madison tells her that Nick is the reason she kept it a secret. She talks about the similarities between Nick and his father, and that has been a big part of the season. It's kind of we kind of gone away from it, but if you remember all the way back to to the first episode of this season, you know, the first episode, the second half of the season, we had that flashback with Nick and his father. We haven't really talked upon, uh, you know, about it since, but I did think this was a good way to bring that back. She takes Alicia's hand and tells her that she was afraid of Nick ending up like his father and that Alicia deserves more. She never loved Alicia any less than Nick, and that's something that Alicia has been afraid, you know, has been worried about, that Madison doesn't care as much about her, that she cares about Nick, and I did like that. It seems that this is Madison's way of kind of making up with Alicia, making it meant. She thought that she was all right. Alicia tells Madison that she loves her too, and it seems like this conflict is over, which I'm glad about because I wasn't especially a fan of it. I don't really think they did what they should have done with it, and I'm glad that for right now it seems this is over. Travis then taking a shower in the hotel, and we see the end of the episode, a group of people are approaching the hotel, they got bags and luggage, and it's the group that Chris was with and more, Brandon's at the front, Chris appears to be gone, I'm assuming he's dead, and that is the way the episode ends, let's get into this episode overall, my predictions for the finale. 
So not a ton to say about this episode. I mean, it was very straightforward and basically end exactly the way I wanted to. My problem with this episode is not that it wasn't a good story, because this actually was a good story. In fact, this is one of the better episodes of this entire season. I really did like this episode overall. I just didn't think that they need to do this all in one episode. Having Travis and Chris really kept us from moving things forward. I think they could have done a little bit more in terms of what they did with Travis and Chris. Like, maybe they could have done, you know, some Ophelia or have some Nick and Luciana in there. Uh, they didn't have to be, it didn't have to be messy. There was a way to do it without being messy, but I just feel they should have told the story over the course of several different episodes and not just this one episode. Now, I get there wasn't much to it, but it just didn't really need to be the whole episode, and especially because it wasn't the whole episode. It was only half the episode, which was very strange, but anyway, I'm assuming that Chris is dead. I think that they pretty much did leave him for dead. Travis warned him, and if Chris got himself killed, then honestly, it's better for the show, because Chris right now is a character that's not doing anything for me. He's boring, and I'm just not a fan of him where the hell is strand in this episode i don't know why strand wasn't there um we know that strand you know he went we don't know really where he went uh but we know that strand was obviously shot he's okay now but i don't know why strand wasn't in this episode very strange i did like the scene between alicia and madison overall um with them and kind of them making amends I thought that was well done but now the brands group is here they're really i think going to interfere things at la you know at la colonia overall i don't really know uh, not la colonia but the hotel i don't really know how that's going to be obviously they still have beef with travis i think they're going to make sure that travis uh gets what he deserves and we'll have to see the way that turns out but i thought that was very interesting Overall, I don't think this was a bad episode by any means. I just felt that we could have maybe spent a little less time on Travis and Chris because it just wasn't the most interesting story. It was sad, it was emotional, but it was very predictable, and it went exactly where I thought it was going to go, and I kind of want a little bit more to it, but it just was very straightforward. A good episode, not a bad episode. I think this was definitely better than the last episode, but let me know, we, the finale is tonight. I can't believe we're already on the finale, but we only have two episodes left, and I honestly have no idea what's going to happen. I really don't have any prediction but i'm glad because i don't really have much prediction going into it. i think that's a good thing but that's my review hope you guys enjoyed the most guys saw this episode of your all love to your thoughts on it we'll see you guys in my next one, which will be for the season finale of fear the walking dead and we'll see you guys for that okay bye